Hi, this is Ram from ramcadem.com. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use the SQL Server group functions. Group functions, in contrast to scalar functions, work on a group of rows and provide one result per group. Let me give you a quick example. Say we have the following salary column. As we learned in previous lessons, using scalar functions, we can display each of these values rounded up or rounded down, for example. The key concept of scalar functions is to provide one result for each field in the column. Now, with group functions, we provide one result per group. So, if we are considering the values of this column as one group, we can calculate the average salary or maybe the minimum salary or the maximum salary for this set of rows. So this is how group functions work. They provide one result per group of rows. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use the following group functions, minimum, maximum, sum, average, and count. So let's begin. Min. The min function returns the lowest value in a set of rows. So if we say, for example, select min of monthly discount from customers, we are getting the lowest monthly discount in customers table. The min function can also operate on date values. So we can say select min join date from customers which returns the earliest join date in customers table. We can also apply the minimum function to string values. For example, we can say select min of last name from customers. This query returns the lowest value sorted in alphabetical order. Adams is the lowest alphabetical value in last name column. For example, if we say select first name, last name from customers, order by last name, you can see that Adams appears first. Max, the max function returns the highest value in a set of rows. So if we say select max monthly discount from customers, we are getting the highest monthly discount in customers table. We can also apply the max function on strings and dates. Let's just copy these two queries and let's change this one instead of min, let's say max. Now we are getting the highest join date, the latest join date, and max last name returns the highest last name, again, sorted alphabetically. So this is the max function. Average, pretty straightforward. The average function returns the average value. So select average monthly discount from customers returns the average monthly discount. The average function can only be applied on numeric values. We cannot calculate average date or average string. Next, the sum function. The sum function returns the total sum. So if we say select sum of monthly discount from customers, we are getting the sum of monthly discount values in customers table. Again, as with average function, the sum function can also be applied only on numeric values. We cannot use this function on dates or string values. The count function provides three options. The first one is count star, which simply counts the number of rows. So if we say select count star from customers, we are getting the number of rows in customers table. Now, instead of saying select count star, we can say select count column. For example, select count monthly 
discount from customers. The count column option counts the number of values in a specific column without considering null values. So here we are getting 936, the number of non-null values in monthly discount column. Again, the difference between count star and count column is important. The count star simply counts the number of rows in specific set of rows. This function doesn't care if in one or more columns we have null values. The count column function counts the number of values in specific column and as we saw, it only counts values which are not null. Okay, the third option is count distinct column. This function counts the number of distinct values in specific column. So let me give you an example. Let's say select distinct marital status from customers. This query returns the distinct values inside the marital status column. Now, select count distinct marital status from customers simply returns for the number of distinct values we have inside this column. Group functions and null values. It is very important you understand that all group functions ignore null values. So if for example, we have a column of 10 rows with one value equals null, the average function would sum nine values and divide the result by nine. So just remember that null values are being ignored when using group functions. So this video was an introduction to group functions. In the next video, we are going to learn how to use the group by and having clauses. Please feel free to ask any question you may have in the comments section below. And if you are looking for a way to practice what we have just learned, in ramkedem.com you will find hundreds of exercises on many different levels. More details can be found in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.